Hey guys, today I have a massive empties video to share with you. I have been saving up all of my beauty trash for the last three months so that I could come on and share my reviews on everything, let you know how I feel about these products now that I've finished them all the way. I love empties videos so much. I've been doing them since the very beginning of my channel. I just checked there are 64 videos on my empties playlist, about to be 65 once this video is up, so... Lots of content to binge if you're in the mood, but before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I love reviewing makeup and skincare, but I also love using up my makeup and skincare. I think that's always the goal when I buy something, I wanna use it up. So if that sounds fun to you, I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around. I upload usually three videos a week. And if you're really loving my videos and you want to support my channel even further, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested. I do an exclusive video and live stream for my patrons and members every month, and I would love to have you join. So I have that and everything else that I talk about linked below. So let's go ahead and get into the empties now. All right, I used up the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Cleansing Balm. This is actually the second one of these that I've used up. I love this cleansing balm. I would say this is my favorite high-end cleansing balm that I've tried. It removes all my makeup, all my sunscreen, and it rinses really easily with warm water so it doesn't leave behind a residue. It's also fragrance-free, so it's a great choice if you have sensitive skin or a sensitive nose. And I probably would repurchase if I'm ever shopping on the Paula's Choice website anyway and I'm in need of a cleansing balm. I would pick it up. That's uh, That was actually the case with this one. I was placing an order anyway and I was like, let's throw in the cleansing balm. I'm almost out of mine. Yeah, I enjoyed every last drop of this. It does such a great job. But I would say, you know, there are so many more affordable cleansing balms too. If you like the sound of this one and you would like to find something more affordable, I would suggest the Beauty of Joseon cleansing balm. I think it's really similar to this one. I honestly think I might like it even better. It's also fragrance free and it's like half the price. So that would be my recommendation. But I think this one is fantastic too. Paula never lets me down. I am such a fan of the Tree Hut body scrubs. This is the Desert Haze scent. I definitely plan to repurchase, probably in a different scent just because I like to try all the scents, but I really enjoyed this one. They describe this scent as a warm smoky floral with keynotes of raspberry, sheer jasmine, and musk. And I'm not sure, not sure I really picked up on the raspberry. Well, I guess there is a little bit of a fruitiness. But this scent totally gives me Bath & Body Works body spray circa 2010 vibes, and I honestly love it. Like, it's just it's just a really nice, fun scent. This one I don't think lingers on the skin as much as the Tahitian Vanilla Bean scent. I would say that is still my favorite of the Tree Hut body scrubs, but this one was really nice too. These just have the perfect texture. A little bit goes a long way. They don't make a mess in your shower. They rinse away really well, and... They're just the right amount of grittiness where it's not too abrasive, but it's also not too gentle. I especially like to use this body scrub before I shave. I feel like it just helps me get a smoother shave and it prevents ingrown hairs because it kind of like lifts the hairs up and gets them ready <laughs> to be shaven. And it's just such a luxurious experience to use this body scrub. I am planning on picking up another one next time I'm at a store that carries it because I really miss having this. I also used up the Peace Out Acne Day Dots. So these are little pimple patches that are supposed to work well under makeup because they're clear. And they definitely are clear. They're a little thick though, I feel like. Like I felt like they still looked a little obvious under makeup for me. So I ended up mainly using these at night, just which is when I normally use pimple patches. And they were okay, but I didn't like these as much as the Alba Botanica acne patches and those I would say are even more invisible than these and they're not necessarily meant to be worn during the day but you totally could I think. I remember those being so invisible that sometimes I would forget to take them off in the morning after uh, sleeping with them on so I would suggest those over these. I also think they're more affordable and the other thing I didn't love about these is they didn't do as good a job extracting the gunk from the pimple which for me is like the whole point of a pimple patch like i love it's, it's just so satisfying to put a pimple patch on at night and then wake up the next morning and it's like completely dried out the pimple and got all the gunk out i just love that but this these didn't really do that so i was kind of disappointed i didn't love this i i used them up and they were fine but i definitely want to get those alba botanica acne patches again okay let's get to some makeup empties now this is an exciting one i actually used this up months ago but then I reused the compact to make a Franken blush, so it just never ended up in my empties until now. But this is the Becca Mini Highlighter in Champagne Pop. I love this highlighter. This is like the OG highlighter formula, but I still feel like it holds up even against highlighters that have come out much more recently than the Becca ones. I just think they're fantastic. They definitely do pack a punch. They're not the most blinding highlighters of all time, but they're pretty intense. But at the same time, they just give us such a smooth, even glow. 
and I love them. So I loved it while I had it. I probably won't buy it again because I feel like, you know, I've experienced the Becca highlighter formula. Now I probably would just like to move on to something else. I have a lot of other highlighters I want to use up in my collection too. So, um, but I had a great time with it. I loved it and I would recommend it if you are in the market for one. They do still sell a few of the shades, even though Becca went out of business, they sell a few of the shades under the Smashbox brand now. All right, for those of you that know the saga here with the CoverGirl Lid Lockup Eyeshadow Primer, I'm here to update you. It only took me nine months to finish the remaining product after removing the stopper. And I am someone, I wait until the very last minute to remove the stopper. I wanna wait until I physically cannot get any more product out. And there was still so much left in here. I really enjoyed this eyeshadow primer though. It did a great job holding my eyeshadows in place. I never had creasing when I used this. It, it does work really well and it's a great value. I would just prefer a squeeze tube because it's just easier to get every last bit out. Kind of bums me out. Like I would estimate at least a third of the product was left in here when I removed the stopper. And you know, most people are gonna throw it away before that point. So it just kind of makes me sad that like so many people are probably wasting a ton of product with this. I do wanna say this is one of those eyeshadow primers that does maintain a little bit of tackiness even after it's dried down onto your eyelid. It stays a little bit tacky. So I often found it necessary to set this with powder, at least from the crease up, just to help with blending because sometimes I found that mattes didn't blend as well over this primer as they could because of that. But all in all, this is a great product. I would definitely consider repurchasing it, but only if they changed the packaging. <laughs> Cause I'm just a little annoyed that it, I mean, yeah. But it is really satisfying to see it totally empty now. There's a tiny bit left, but it started to dry out. So I was like, I think, I think it's time. <laughs> it's time to move on. Also from CoverGirl, I finished up the Perfect Point Plus eyeliner in espresso. I think this is a really user-friendly eyeliner formula. It's not the kind of eyeliner that's going to set and be completely waterproof or anything, so it's probably not the best for the waterline, but it's really easy to either wing out or smudge out with a brush, and so that's what I really liked about it. I also liked how fine the tip is. I do have to caution you though because another shade of this that I had, I think it was the shade charcoal, the packaging on that one stopped clicking up any liner, even though I know for a fact it wasn't empty because I didn't use that one nearly as much as I used this one. I do think this one is completely empty because I've been using this a ton over the past like two years. But this packaging, because it's not retractable, you can't twist it back down. So there's no way to tell how much is left. And if it stops clicking up, it's like, oh well, <laughs> like you just have to throw it out. So because of that, I probably wouldn't recommend this. I'm not planning on repurchasing these because I don't want to risk that happening again. But I mean, otherwise, I really enjoyed it. I, I, mean, I think there are plenty of great brown pencil liners out there. Let me know if you have any recommendations, but I did enjoy my time with this one. Ooh, okay. This is one of those rare foundations that I loved from beginning to end. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I wore the shade Fair 30N. This is so good. I don't think there was a single time I used this foundation that I wasn't happy with it just such a reliable and consistent foundation. A lot of foundations I will change my mind about by the time I use them up because, you know, my skin is always changing, the weather is always changing. I have had this foundation for two years and I loved it every single time I used it. This is one of those foundations that for me, it works well under basically any circumstance. No matter what my skin is going through, this always looks so good. I even used this on my friend for her wedding and this was an outdoor wedding in the middle of summer in Georgia when it was like 90 million degrees outside, super humid, and it looked so good on her. Even by the end of the night, it looked amazing. Now, I will say I also used Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, which I'm sure, you know, also deserves a little bit of the credit, but my friend liked it so much that she ended up buying one for herself after that. So I think that says it all right there. There's really not another foundation that I recommend more than this one. It has medium coverage and a satin finish, and it's just one of those formulas that I feel like works for a lot of different skin types. Like if someone that I don't know anything about asked me for a foundation recommendation, I would recommend this one. This is just such an amazing foundation. I really hope ColourPop never discontinues this. I also finished up the Mented Peach Lip Pencil, and I really enjoyed this. Granted, it's really hard to, for a lip liner formula to disappoint me because I usually, if I don't like a lip liner, it's because of the shade. <laughs> Otherwise, I kind of like them all. But this one I enjoyed. I don't think there was anything particularly standout about it, but I liked the shade of this a lot. It was a great 
peachy nude color. It just paired really well with a lot of my nude and warmer nude lip products. So I would recommend it if you're on the hunt for a new lip liner. I don't think you can go wrong with the minted ones. But, you know, I don't know if I'll repurchase, you know, maybe, maybe one day if I see, I probably wouldn't purchase this exact same shade again, even though I liked it, it wasn't like holy grail status. Oh, I'm so happy that this is done. This is the Kristen S. Scalp Purifying Micellar Shampoo. <sighs> the only thing I liked about this was the scent. That's it. That's all I liked. And the packaging's cute too. The only reason this is empty right now is because Nathan powered through and used this up as a body wash. <laughs> I tried to do that, but the one time I used it as a body wash, it dried out my skin so badly. So that's the same reason why I don't like it for my hair, the same reason Nathan didn't like it for his hair. I mean, it's a clarifying shampoo, so it's the kind of thing you want to just use on an as-needed basis. I clarify my scalp max once a week. And even after deep conditioning, my hair would just be so, so dry after using this. It was just, just not worth it. Like, I'd rather just not clarify at all. Oh, I did also use this to clean the bathtub one time when we ran out of regular bathroom cleaner, and I would say that was my favorite way to use this. I would say save yourself the trouble and get the Suave $2 Daily Clarifying Shampoo. That one is worlds better than this one, and it's also like, what, like a tenth of the price? But luckily, I think this is the only product in this empties that I actively hated, so that's good. This, however, I loved. This is the Ionique Centella Calming Daily Sunscreen, and this continues to be my number one facial sunscreen. I actually have some backups that I'm really excited to open. Probably will wait until I use up some of my other sunscreens, but I love this so much. It is really hydrating, really soothing to sensitive skin. It gives a little bit of a glowy finish without feeling greasy, and like most Asian chemical sunscreens, you literally can't feel it on your skin. It just feels like a moisturizer. It wears really well under makeup, doesn't burn my eyes. It also happens to be one of the most affordable sunscreens of all, like of all of them, not just Asian sunscreens, but across the board. So good, I have nothing bad to say about it. And if you were planning to order this off of YesStyle, I do have an affiliate code with YesStyle, it's just Sarah Rose, and I believe it's 10% off. So feel free to take advantage of that if you would like. I also, same goes for this one. This is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun SPF 50 Plus, but this is another one that I think would work well for just about any skin type, unless you have just like really, really dry skin, you might want something a little more hydrating than this, but otherwise, I think this is such a great option. This one gives a little bit of a glow as well, doesn't sting my eyes, doesn't irritate my skin, wears well under makeup. It pretty much checks all the boxes, so I would recommend this one too. And if you're interested in more K-Beauty sunscreen reviews, I have done two big K-Beauty sunscreen roundups this year. Uh, one of them focused more on mineral and hybrid sunscreens. There were a few chemical sunscreens in there, and the second one was focused on just chemical and hybrid K-Beauty sunscreens. So I'll link both of those below. In both of those videos, I showed demos of me applying both of these and a bunch of other ones. So I'll link that below if you are curious. Ooh, okay, this is my second or third bottle of this. I love this shampoo. I think there's been one of these in every one of my empties videos in 2023 so far. It's the Dove Dryness and Itch Relief Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. This is my favorite anti-dandruff shampoo. I already have another one in the shower right now. I feel like I'll probably always have one of these on hand. I really like it because, number one, it does not dry out my hair. Like, most other dandruff shampoos are really drying, and they just don't make my hair feel good. And the other thing I like about this one is that it actually smells good. A lot of dandruff shampoos just smell weird, or they leave, like, a lingering, weird smell on your hair. But this one doesn't. It just it smells really clean. There's no weird, like after smell that it leaves behind and yeah i really love it so i think i will continue to repurchase this shampoo you definitely do have to keep using it consistently to maintain the results like this is pretty much the only shampoo i use except for occasionally i use the suave daily clarifying shampoo if i need a good deep cleanse but i notice that if i stop using this and i switch to a regular shampoo the flakes come back. Another thing from Dove, this is the Go Fresh Renew Nourishing Body Wash in the raspberry and lime scent. I bought this at Grocery Outlet and I checked online. It doesn't seem like they're selling this anymore, which is a bummer because I really enjoyed this. Very nice, creamy, hydrating formula and the scent was really beautiful. It's not such a strong scent that it's going to linger on your skin, but it's the kind of body wash scent that just like fills up the bathroom as you're using it, which I really enjoy because it just feels like a nice 
aromatherapy sort of experience. I really enjoy it. I would repurchase this if I could. If I see it at Grocery Outlet again, I might. But it does have me curious also to try other Dove body care products. Okay, this one makes me sad because I really enjoyed this, but I think I've discovered I'm allergic to one of the ingredients in here. So this is the Suave Moroccan Oil Infusion Shine Conditioner. I love this. I think I also got this at Grocery Outlet for like $2 and it made my hair feel so soft. Every time I used it, it just, it, it did an amazing job. But unfortunately, I watch a dermatologist on YouTube, Dr. Dre. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of her. Whenever she does like shop with me videos, especially at Dollar Tree and like places with more inexpensive products like this, she mentions that there's this ingredient, methyl isothiazolinone, that a lot of people become allergic to. And I didn't think that I was allergic to it, but then in one of her vlogs, she was mentioning how a lot of the time when people do become allergic to that ingredient, even if it's in a hair care product, the first place that a lot of people end up getting a reaction is either on their ears or their eyelids. And guess where I have been getting these like persistent on and off, just dry, itchy, almost eczema-like flares? For the past year so it kind of clicked when i had that realization i was like wait a minute um i don't think this is the only product with that ingredient that i've used over the last year so it kind of it all makes sense anyone remember last summer when my eyelids were so dry and itchy i had to stop wearing eye makeup for like a week it was tragic i don't remember what shampoos and conditioners i was using at that time but i'm going to guess that that is the case because also I noticed recently my eye, my like my eyelids, especially the corners of my eyes, were so itchy. The skin, and I've also gotten like really dry skin on my ears, which is just so unusual. So it all makes sense now. From now on, I'm gonna check every product for that ingredient. But yeah, I'm really bummed because I really did enjoy this otherwise. But I will keep an eye out for other suave conditioners that maybe don't have that ingredient. By the way, fortunately, the suave clarifying shampoo does not have that. So that's good news. All right, remember like a month ago when I hauled this in an Ulta haul and I was like, this is such a big size for a travel size. This is gonna last me forever. It's empty now. So this is the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Cream. And I really like this. I mean, obviously, cause I used it up so quickly. I have pretty much been using this almost every day since I got it. So I got the travel size just so that I could try it out because this is the first curl cream I've ever used to my knowledge, like in my entire life. I remember a long time ago, I would use mousse in my hair, like in middle school, but it has been so long since I've used any kind of curl product to scrunch my hair, but I really enjoyed this. I actually do have it in my hair today it says it's for all curl types i for context i have pretty fine and thin hair and my curl i don't know what my curl type is i haven't gotten that deep into it yet but i would say i have kind of a mix of loose ringlets in my hair and some waves it's like a cross between wavy and curly i would say so that's why i've described my hair type i really felt like this did a good job defining my curls a lot of you guys told me the best way to use any sort of curl cream like this is to apply it to like really wet hair as soon as you get out of the shower put it in so that's what i've been doing and it does such a good job it does make my hair a little bit crunchy as it dries but as it's drying i'll kind of continue scrunching it with my hands or if i want to add even more volume i'll use my hair dryer with the uh, d diffuser that's meant for curly hair and that'll help just soften them a little bit and I also feel like this did help reduce frizz so I'm definitely going to consider getting this again but also I'm kind of new to this curly hair journey so I kind of am interested to try other curl creams as well so let me know if you have any favorite curl creams you think I should try but this one will definitely be on my list to pick up a full size in the future unless I find something I like better this is the Osea Andaria Collagen Body Lotion this is a more runny liquidy body lotion which I did really enjoy in the summer because it was really quick to sink into my skin I it just blended in instantly so I didn't have to sit there rubbing it in and it didn't feel heavy and like stifling on my skin in the summer I would say if you have really dry body skin though you might not find this to give enough lasting hydration it has a light citrusy scent the same scent that they use in their body oil and body butter I did see that they carry a fragrance-free version of this as well though so that's nice but honestly I'd be more excited about this if they had other fun scents because I'm just not much of a citrus scent person I prefer I don't know I, I just it's just not my favorite scent it is pleasant scent but 
I, I think I, I don't I like when body lotions come in a lot of different scents to choose from because that just makes me happy. But I've really liked all of the Osea products that I've tried, but they are definitely a splurgy brand. Like if you want to splurge on just something fancy that's going to look really pretty on your countertop, that's what Osea is for, you know? But using this as a body lotion, I felt like I went through it really quickly. Like I could, every time I used it, I would see it go down. I mean, duh, but like the bottle is not very big for how expensive this is, so. And I don't necessarily like it more than drugstore body lotions that I've tried. Like if you are looking for a more affordable body lotion that sinks in quickly, I would recommend the Bliss Cloud 9 body lotions. I also love the EOS body lotion. Those are so rich and buttery if you want something even more like a body butter from the drugstore. Those are incredible and the vanilla scent is heavenly. Yeah, I really want to get that again because it's been a while since I've had it, but that was one of my favorite body lotions I've ever tried and I would buy that one over this one personally. This is funny. This actually has a similar scent to the Osea body lotion. It's, it's a kind of a citrusy scent. This is the Ula Hendrickson Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. I enjoyed this. I thought it was nice, but it wasn't anything life-changing either. The nice thing about this, though, is it does kind of have the texture of a gel cream, but it felt a lot more hydrating than most gel creams do. Like, it really did feel like it left some good lasting hydration on my skin. I actually found the texture of this pretty similar to the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream, and that one I prefer because it is cheaper and it also comes in a fragrance-free version. So I would honestly recommend that one over this one, but I, I did enjoy this. Like, if you can get a super steep discount on this, th then I would say go for it because it was really nice to have, but I don't see a reason to get it again. Okay, this I'm really sad about. I normally don't include expired products in empties, but I just wanted to share this. So this is the Coco Kind Chia Facial Oil, and I am so sad, but this, the smell of this has changed. Oh yeah, the smell has gone rancid. <laughs> yeah, I think I started using this in March of this year, and I noticed the smell started to turn probably five to six months in. So it's a bummer because on the packaging it says it has a 12 month shelf life. So I don't necessarily know if I should fault this product though because we did move earlier this summer and this was like packed away in a U-Haul for hours. So I don't know if I can 100% blame the product for that. But I loved this facial oil so much that I think I'm actually going to buy another one and just give it another chance. I just want to give it one more chance. I have somewhat of an attachment to this oil because it basically single-handedly cured my chronically dry, flaky tretinoin skin, and I just, I'm eternally grateful. Not that when I'm using this I don't still deal with the occasional dry patches, and granted I also haven't used this in the winter yet, but basically since I started using tretinoin, I would just constantly be dealing with dry skin, really irritated skin. My skin barrier would just constantly feel disrupted. Once I got everything back under control, it would get it would get super dry again, but this has really, really reduced the amount of dryness that my skin gets now. To replace this, I've been using the Ordinary Rosehip Seed Oil, and I, I like that one, but not as much as this one. I just feel like it doesn't have that, like, delicious, juicy feeling on my skin. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm also suspicious that the Ordinary Oil is breaking me out. I'm kind of doing an experiment now to see if that was the culprit, but I miss this oil. I don't know if I'd recommend this. Stay tuned because I do want to buy another one and see if it lasts a full year instead because I was about halfway through it and it, it just turned on me a month or two after we moved. So I think it, you know, it could have had something to do with that. But anyway, all right, the Billy Whipped Shave Cream. This is another example of a product that I would like more if it came in more fun scents. This scent is called Fresh Squeezed Grapefruit. I don't know. To me, this smells like the Osea body lotion and the Ula Hendrickson moisturizer. It's another one of those just, I don't know, to me it's a boring scent. I just don't like, I, I just don't care for that scent. If this had like a vanilla scent or just something really warm and yummy, I would probably repurchase it because otherwise it is a really nice shaving cream. It comes out like a pretty rich cream. It lathers up a little bit and I feel like I always get a really smooth shave with it. But I think I'm going to go back to the Tree Hut Shave Oils now. I had one of those a long time ago, and I really liked it. So I think I want to go back to that and maybe get a new scent, because I am I just love all the scents they have. Also finished up the Bliss Clear Genius Body Acne Spray. This has 2% salicylic acid. I would spray this on my chest and upper back when I would get out of the shower, and I did feel like it helped to keep 
my body acne at bay. Didn't completely get rid of it, but it definitely made a difference, and it lasted me a good long time. Right now, I'm using the Versed Backup Plan Acne Body Mist, and I think I like that one better, mainly because of the packaging. Some of this blue coating started to flake off, or like rub off onto my fingers. And also really like the last month's worth of product of this was really hard to get out. Towards the end of this, I could only spray it standing up like this, which made it really hard to spray onto my back because normally I would hold it like this to spray onto my back. So it just got kind of annoying towards the end. So I thought this did a good job, but I probably wouldn't repurchase it. All right, last few things. We have the Glow Recipe Avocado Ceramide Moisture Barrier Cleanser. So this is supposed to be really nourishing for the moisture barrier, which is great. Um, this does lather up a little bit though, which for me, that always leaves my skin feeling stripped no matter how hydrating the cleanser is. So I ended up using this up as my body acne cleanser. When I shower, the very last step of my shower routine is I always take a face cleanser. Usually if it's a face cleanser, I don't like on my face. That's what I will use on my chest and back to I, I always do that because sometimes i feel like conditioner the conditioner once i rinse it out of my hair there will still be some like residue on my back and that can really clog my pores and cause more acne so that's what i used this for and it was fine but i certainly would have no reason to get this again and then i gave these two to nathan to finish up because he is basically glow recipe's biggest fan every time i get pr from them i pretty much always give it to him because he just has loved every product from them that he's tried so these are minis of the watermelon glow niacinamide dew drops and the watermelon glow pink juice moisturizer he really likes anything with niacinamide it seems to really help keep his skin nice and even and like even toned so these really did the trick for him. I have used both of these before. In fact, I have one of these that I keep in my makeup collection to like mix with products because it's just a really great mixing product. But it leaves a really pretty glass skin glow, especially if you're not wearing makeup. It really shows through. So I thought this looked really good on his skin. Um, and then the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. I have used this before as well. For me, this is this is like the definition of a gel moisturizer. It was it's very runny, almost feels more like a serum, so it's definitely not hydrating enough for me. But if you don't have dry skin or if you don't feel like you need a ton of moisture, then you might like this one. Nathan enjoyed it. Um, I think he's prone to getting clogged pores from uh, moisturizers that are too heavy, and th so this was a good one for him, I think. And now we are left with a nice empty empties bin. Really excited to see what else I can use up by the end of the year. And if you love empties videos as much as I do, like I said, I've done over 60 of them on my channel apparently, and I have them all saved to a playlist. So feel free to binge. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Also, feel free to check out the Patreon or the channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel even further. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!